the first time in over 40 years, the world appears to be on the brink of a global epidemic of a new flu virus. Watched in fear as the deadly virus spreads around the world at an alarming rate. A huge proportion of deaths are among healthy young adults under 45. Ultimately, pandemic flu response will involve everyone's cooperation. The global pandemic alert status has been raised to phase five. It's a warning to the world's governments that time is short. So Plans, the federal government has made no final decision on whether to vaccinate. Already spanning the globe from Asia to Europe. If anyone can hear this message my name is Tony Preston. I'm broadcasting on the 121.5 emergency frequency. Please, if there are any survivors, please respond. I'm all alone. Please. Everybody's dead. I kind of got that feeling after the news stopped broadcasting two weeks ago. It's also been two weeks since I've heard from anyone. When all this started, I was getting calls every five minutes. And then nothing. It seemed as though everything decided to end. All at the same time. News updates, the radio transmissions, the sirens, the screams. They all just stopped. Now everything's quiet. Before the news stopped, the reports were saying something about a mutated virus. Whatever it was, it was airborne and it was fatal. So here I am, quarantined, confined, isolated in my own apartment. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I spent my whole life retreating from society, happily living a little solitary existence. It's quite ironic, really. I'm only alive now because I never really lived in the first place. Being a pathetic little hermit, it's actually saved my life. But now that I really am alone, I'm starting to miss it. Society with all its faults always gave me a choice. It was always there. I always had a chance to rejoin the world. But now it's gone. Living in a world in which everyone else is dead gets me thinking, what now? What should a person do when they're faced with a lifetime full of nothing? In a world full of ways to die and empty reasons to live. Perhaps that person should consider relinquishing all possibility of being consumed by that world. No. This room is already my cell. 
I won't let it become my tomb. Despite its obvious futility, every so often I'll listen out just to hear if anything is still out there. I haven't heard anything yet. There's nice people downstairs who I used to rent this room off a long gone. Their familiar sounds died around the same time that everything else did. Electricity will soon stop. Food will spoil. Books are only enjoyable the first two or three times. And as for whiskey, well, that lost its warmth a long time ago. So I suppose the only good thing about this pandemic is that there's no traffic. But when you're living in a world where you can't go outside, Going outside is to die, but staying here is to invite an even slower death. I'll have to get out of here sooner or later. The last thing I see could either be these four walls, the barrel of a gun, or it could be the sky, the trees. I could feel the wind on my face just one last time. going back now. All my life I've been an overtly cynical fool, contained in a world of my own, never living a single moment of my own life. Now I intend to live more in my final moments than I ever did in over 20 years. They're all dead. Everyone. Acquaintances, neighbours, relatives. All of the meaningless faces, gone. And they're waiting for me. For the first time in my life, I go with happiness to join the rest of the world. I won't be alone anymore. Hello? Hello? Tony? Tony, are you there? This is Mike. Mike Patterson. Search and rescue team. We received your transmission. Where's your current location? Over.